Hey there, speculators. It's Rod, your Futures Fanatic. Welcome back to Futures Fanatic channel. Futures Fanatic is for educational purposes only. Make sure you read these risk disclosures and disclaimers. Hey, back with a quick video here tonight. Uh, before I get going, just wanted to remind, uh, tell everybody that uh, if you're watching this on Monday, June 12th, it is the last day for this Apex sale. These seem to go on for quite a while, but it will end tonight. You can save 80% off all of your subscriptions uh, for as long as you have those subscriptions. That's 80% off. You can buy up to 20 different accounts. You can use a trade copy or all that good stuff. If you're not familiar at all with these prop programs, good good thing to do to maybe hit the like, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications. I talk a lot about how you can use these prop programs to get uh, uh, a low-cost way to learn how to trade the futures markets without risking any of your own capital. Okay, tomorrow we have a CPI print. Uh, the CPI, uh, Consumer Price Index, has been moving around the entire markets. It's going to be at 830 Eastern. I want to use it as a quick opportunity to show you how I use the options on futures markets and tell you just a little bit about some of the benefits of options on futures uh, that make them different than the equity options. So real quick, um, let's just take a look at the uh, ZN here. This is the 10-year note. It trades in 64ths, like 164th, 264th, 364th. Uh, it's $1,000 per point. Uh, each tick uh, is about $15.62. So if you have 64 of those, that adds up to 1,000. Right now, I'm long one contract that you can see is up about $467. I'm resting in order to sell that at 114 and also to do a buy limit down here at 113. And I'm probably going to rest that in into the, uh, the print tomorrow, which is going to happen at 8.30. Now, what I wanted to explain very quickly is how you can also take shots or express this particular trade using options and some of the benefits of using uh, options on futures versus uh, equity options. So I won't go into that all tonight, but I'm going to do a series of, I think I'm going to do a series. I, <laughs> whatever. You're watching this video. I hope to be doing a series on this. Um, one of the uh, benefits of options on futures is that each contract you sell is actually only deliverable as one of the underlying. So let me give you an example. If you were to sell a 113 put on the ZN into the number tomorrow and the market went down dramatically and you actually got filled, for instance, and then you were short a put and the market continued to go down, uh, you could potentially get assigned that, but not 100 or not 10 of the ZN, just one, the same as if you had actually bought the ZN. Okay. Equity options work differently. If you have one contract that you're short or long in the equity markets, stock options, which are very, very popular, and I trade a decent amount of stock options still, but you um, and you're sh and you're short you're going to get assigned, if you do get assigned, 100 shares, not one share, not 10 shares, 100 shares. So that makes the uh, the leverage that's going on far different than the options market. So once you understand the power of options on futures and a product like the ZN or the 10-year note, which by the way, only has an initial maintenance of about $2,000. I'll go into this a little bit more. The initial maintenance is the same as, as if you were long or short. So there's no actual difference. So on interactive brokers, the initial maintenance uh, maintenance and initial for the ZN is uh, it's two thousand dollars. So let me show you what I'm planning on doing tomorrow. Is tomorrow right now the ZN is trading like I said right here. If you can see this chart over here on the left, it's trading at about one thirteen spot two hundred. Don't worry if you don't understand these tick increments or whatever. Just think of it from one thirteen this level down here. Okay, so we're, actually I can use, I think I'll draw it on here. Uh, the arrow right here, so this is 113, is a nice even round number. And then let's go to, uh, let me tighten this up a little bit, to 114 up here. Okay, so 114 is up here. We'll just grab this, and we'll go like this. Uh, by the way, this is not meant for, for beginners. If you have absolutely no idea what's going on here, but you're interested in the best product for trading uh, for daily income, it's not future, excuse me, it's not Forex, it's not crypto, it's not the stock market, it is the futures markets. And if you understand options at all, you're going to really want to pay attention and learn more about options on futures. If you don't understand options at all, um, I'll have some links below to some great introductory educational places where you can just learn the basics of options so that what I'm talking about here will make a little bit more sense. One of the comments I get all the time is that I talk too fast. I get it. I'm just trying to get through a lot of information here. And um, I'm actually going to gear my channel a little bit more towards people that want to invest the time to educate themselves. And then we'll take their education to another level here with the Futures Fanatic. Okay. So 113 and 114 <coughs> is two nice levels. That's $1,000 in between these two levels. Okay. So this I will actually draw over here. Ah, 
damn it, I closed the whiteboard. Never mind, I can't draw over here. So the diff difference between these two here is $1,000. And tomorrow, we are going to get some movement once the CPI number comes out. I have no idea. You could tell me what the number is going to be. I couldn't tell you whether we're going to go up or down. But what I'm going to do is rest some orders to sell calls here at 114 and sell puts here at 113. Now, I'm already long, uh, I'm already long the ZN contract. I'm long it from 113 spot 055. And I'll just sell it here at 114. If, if it pops up there, I'll buy another one at 113. Now, if I actually get short a call, uh, that you can kind of think of that as a covered call. But let me just go back to the options chain here real quick, and we'll talk about what it looks like to actually put on this trade. So right now, it's uh, after hours. It's um, it's about I don't know 10 or 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and the 114 calls are selling for 14 ticks, and the 113 calls are selling for nine ticks. Now, I don't create strangles. I don't sell these at the same time. What I'm looking to do is place some what I call you know lottery ticket kind of things where I'll sell this 113 put for maybe 18 or 20. And at some point, it's a feel. You're just making this up. You're trying to catch the big move one direction or the other so you can actually scale into that. So if I were to sell this for, let's say, 10 ticks or 12 ticks or 18 ticks, it's, it's the value of that nine, okay? Um, let's just use what it's trading at right now, nine, times 15.625. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, calculator on here real quick. We'll go calculator. We'll go 9 times 15 spot 625 equals. Okay, so if you sold one of the 113 puts tomorrow uh, at 964, so you would be credited $140.60 $140 less some commission. Okay, now your only obligation being short that 113 put is you could get assigned at 113 and be long the, at 113, but you got paid $140 for that. And you're only long one, not 10, not 100, okay? So assignment risk in options on futures is infinitely less scary than it is with stock options. In fact, with stock options, almost everybody, especially if you're trading high dollar stocks, which most people are, and thank goodness a lot of these stocks have split down to 100 or 200 or 300. They're no longer like 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000. There's still some $3,000 stocks out there. Um, they, you have to use spreads, and spreads just cut into your profit margins. Uh, they call that defined risk, but it's also defined, defined gain. Here, if I sell the 113 put, I get $140 credit. If the mark, if the rates skyrocket tomorrow, and and by the way, these are Wednesday expiration. I'm making this video on Monday night. The CPI number is Tuesday. All right. So, $140.62 I get credited, and if it ends up closing below 113 on Wednesday at the close, uh, then I'm just long at 113. Now, in future lessons, I'll talk about plenty of ways to hedge. You can actually go short the underlying, and then it will offset. But that's what would, we would be paid there. Now, on the 114, it would be 14 times uh, 625. So let me just do it one more time, times 1562. So it's 14 times uh, $15 times $15.62, actually 62 and a half cents like that. So $218. Now, again, I'm not suggesting that you put on a strangle. In other words, sell both. What we're looking to do is put orders that are double what the current market is on each side and see if we just get filled. And a lot of the time on these CPI prints, you will get whippy action in both directions. So you can actually scale into that particular thing. And again, we can trade the underlying as well. All right. So the ba basic takeaway tonight is this is the, the, um, the gold market. The treasury markets are a great, great way to play these CPI uh, CPI prints, which are probably only going to be interesting for maybe another few months. I mean, obviously, I have no idea. Maybe they'll be interesting for a couple more years. But I traded for 10 years where no one, I couldn't even tell you when the PPI or CPI came out because no one cared because rates were so low. We're in a different environment right now. And options on futures are a good way to express directional trades. Um, or even if you have other ways that you want to uh, trade options and you're familiar with options, just know that because the contract is assignable as one of the underlying and not a multiple of the underlying, you will understand the power, especially if you happen to be an options trader. Okay, so leaving it there, uh, basically my play is going to be um, resting in order to sell the one that I'm long here at 114 and sell uh, put.
uh, uh, buy some at 113, and then tomorrow morning, right before the print, I'll throw out some short calls and short puts at 113 and 114, maybe two or three contracts each, and see which ones get hit, if any. Maybe neither of them get hit. Who knows? We could, it could be a dud and just stays right in the middle. But um, really good opportunity for trading that CPI using options on futures. If this was way over your head, um, I apologize for that. But some of you will connect with this and it will be the first part of your lessons on understanding the benefits of options on futures versus uh, just stock options or options in general. And I really would encourage you to hit that like, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, all that kind of stuff because uh, I will continue to teach on this and I think at some point it will eventually, eventually sink in. To my knowledge, I'm one of like the only guys out there that runs a trade room. By the way, you can find uh, a link below if you want to sign up for uh, for free. I'll put a code there, save 10. You can sign up for two, two weeks for absolutely uh, no money. It's normally a whole whopping $10. And uh, by the way, there's no upsell or rebuy or rebuild or anything like that. You can just come check out. And I think we're one of the only communities that I'm aware of that trades uh, futures, all the underlying contracts, crude, uh, gold, the stock indices, and the treasuries, and also talks about ways of expressing directional trades uh, using options. And we're almost always, we're not almost, we're 100% short. So short delta, short premium, which is really the proper way to trade these things. And again, sounding like a broken record, because the multiplier is one to one, it makes doing so far, far easier to manage risk. And essentially all you're doing is getting paid to take a directional trade that you would take in the underlying anyway. All right, good luck tomorrow on the CPI. Uh, last night for, uh, for the uh, TD, for excuse me, for the AP, uh, Apex Trader funding, 80% uh, off. Um, no, you cannot trade options on futures in any of these prop programs. Yes, my plan, if you watched the video that I made at the very beginning of the year, I was supposed to have an options on futures prop program set up by now. I've run into, unfortunately, a lot of uh, issues with that that have to do with a um, variety of things that have not let me launch that program. I hope at some point I will be able to offer some prop tr or some funding and some education on options on futures. But in the, in, in the meantime, we'll put it here on the, uh, on the channel. This got a little long-winded, a little long. Again, be safe tomorrow, and then on Wednesday we have a Fed announcement, so it should be a really fun week. Stay green, trade like you mean it, and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks.